Excellent. So, everybody, welcome very much to our third uh, Nadiosa webinar uh, for 2020, where our focus today is going to be around collaboration and online learning, and particularly looking at it from the perspective of international collaboration. And uh, I think all of us are, due to the, the impact that this year has had, um, has shown us the, the, the value in being able to collaborate with colleagues outside of our own institutions um, and to collaborate with, with colleagues um, in other countries as well. And although there have been many, many challenges that all of us have gone through and continue to experience every day, uh, not just ourselves as academics, but also our students, um, we appreciate that we, can, we are able to, through the medium of Zoom and others, make use of, of getting expertise from other countries and, and, and experts in like Professor Howard to, to share with us. So welcome very much to our webinar this afternoon. Uh, my name is Greg Krull and with me I have Ephraim Plunger. We are representing the Nadiosa um, uh, Executive Committees um, and we'd like to welcome all Nadiosa members to this webinar but we also know there's a lot of uh, members uh, today joining us who are not Nadiosa members so welcome to you as well. I'd like to introduce our special guest for the webinar this afternoon, uh, Professor Barbara Howard. Um, professor Howard is um, a professor of leadership and educational studies at the Appalachian State University, which is in North Carolina um, in the United States. Um, and she has years of experience in terms of education, both in terms of teaching within schools, as well as in administration uh, at a district and state level. Um, as well as in terms of training teachers. Um, and she's engaged in many different areas within education, but, but has particular focus in online learning, development of online courses and online pedagogy, and creating new graduate programs. Um, she's also the current president of the North uh, Carolina Professors Educational Leadership and past chair of the Joint uh, Committee on Standards for Educational Evaluation. So she brings with her a lot of expertise and and and. Uh, and experience in this area and I know she's also currently teaching courses where she has students from many different countries and I'm sure that she will she'll get into that as she talks today. So uh, Professor Howard thank you so much for joining us. I know initially we had planned uh, to invite you as one of our keynote speakers for the Nadiosa conference this year and that unfortunately couldn't take place but we're glad that we still have this opportunity to to welcome you to join our webinar today and to share with us. Um, I'd just like to, before I hand over to, doc, to Dr. Howard, is to just um, welcome everyone who's just joined us into the, the session today. Um, I ask that you please keep your microphones on mute, and you can also turn off your videos when you're not speaking. Um, that just uh, makes it more comfortable for the others. As we are going through the presentation, there will be time for you to, 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 to raise your hand and be able to speak or make use of the chat. Um, and we'll be making use of the chat throughout the session today. We are also recording the session for people who cannot uh, be with us this afternoon. Uh, so Professor Howard, over to you and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Greg and Ephraim for, for hosting this session and for inviting me. And yes, I'm very sad that we're not doing this in person. I was in uh, South Africa last year in June and loved it and was so looking forward to coming back. However, this I, I'm happy that we're able to do this. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you. Uh, don't get too comfortable because I will not be lecturing to you. That's one thing that um, I've learned with my classes. Um, I teach 100% online and have for several years. You are in my classroom. The Zoom classroom is where I have been teaching my students in educational administration for several years. So welcome and thank you very much for being here. This is what I hope you will walk away with at the end of this session. I hope you'll be able to define what do we mean by international collaboration. I would like to explore virtual international collaboration with you as a way to extend our own borders. We are becoming more and more of a global society. I think the pandemic has, has shown us how connected we are. So I would like to, to talk to you about every field of study can collaborate internationally. 
I would like to share some strategies that might help you enhance your collaboration. And I would like to let you know about some barriers that can actually slow down a project. I've been doing this for about six years, starting with colleagues in Russia and now extending to colleagues in South Africa. And so I hope some of the lessons that we learned when we first start in, started embarking on this, I hope it will benefit you. And then I want to help you establish a model for yourself for a successful international collaboration. And I want to, of course, encourage future international collaborations. So I hope that you leave here today with some ideas and I hope you leave here with um, some, some thought as to how you might participate in an international collaboration. So let's get started. What I would like for you to do is you have a chat box over to the side. If you'll open your chat box and if you will simply type in there, I have four questions to ask you. And I would like for you to just very quickly answer each question, put the number one, two, three, or four, answer the question. And more importantly, I would like for you to read everyone else's answer. So we're ready. Please don't forget, type it in the chat box and include the number of the question in your answer. Your, this is not a quiz. Your first question, please tell us, put number one and then put your position. What is your professional position? Whatever it is, what is your job title? Very good, we have quite a, this is excellent, excellent, thank you. Okay. All right, excellent. I don't know if everyone's had a chance, just, just your, yes, thank you. This gives you a sense of who's in the room, okay? All right, let's get to the next question. And for this one, just a simple yes or no, or a why or in. Have you ever collaborated with a colleague from another culture, yes or no? Oh, excellent. You will be building on this and if you have not i hope your colleagues will inspire you to okay. No, no, okay all right the next question Number three, thank you. If no, and this is only for those that have, no, I haven't done this before. Would you please just let us know, are you thinking about it for the next few months? Do you think you would plan to be in an international collaboration? Excellent, excellent. You may have a project in mind. You may, I hope you do. And you may, if you're not planning to, maybe I can inspire you to think about being in one, All right. And finally, the fourth question has, yes or no, has the COVID-19 pandemic changed in any way the way you work with others? Have you had meetings canceled? Have you had projects canceled? I know I was supposed to come to South Africa in July to bring students and attend this conference. So it's definitely affected me, yes. This gives us even more reason to collaborate online, internationally, using the technology that we have. Now, of course, international collaboration can involve face-to-face -face meetings, probably should, I do those as well. But you're not limited to just face-to-face. -face. 
So if you've put on hold some of your collaborations, you may want to consider using a technology platform. Now the next step, I told you not to get too comfortable. I'm going to move you into breakout rooms just for three minutes. And I'm putting a timer. You have three minutes, so don't get too comfortable in your room. When you get the invitation to join a room, just click yes, and you will be randomly placed in a room with other participants in this group. And this is your task. You have a very definite task. You have among your group, there will be two to three people in each breakout room. So not a large group, but you have to decide on the name of one celebrity or well-known person in the world, anywhere in the world, one well-known person. We would all know this person's name, maybe living or dead. And here's the caveat. It, this person cannot be from either of your countries. So if you're in the room, you must choose a celebrity who is not from your home country. And then you're going to decide, and you have three minutes to do this, you must decide what project you would build around that celebrity, around that well-known person. Would you build a museum? Would you write a book or an article? Would you teach a class together on this person's work? Or would you build a website or blog? Just some, some project. So here's your task. You must choose a well-known person, living or dead, from somewhere other than your home countries. You must decide on one project that you would do together to honor this person's work. All right, everybody understand? Are there any questions? All right. And Zoom will randomly place you in, uh, there'll be three to four participants in each room. So here you go. Simply click on to join when you're given the invitation. Alexa, set an alarm for three minutes from now. Three minutes, starting now.
Alexa, stop. Yeah, Alexa and Siri, them, they, they do things when we least expect it. All right, I believe everyone's coming back in now. It takes a minute to close the rooms. It, it, it takes you a little while to travel for breakout rooms in. Excellent, excellent. Would uh, someone from a breakout room, would you like to share the person that you choose? I'm not gonna put anybody on the spot, so I'm not gonna ask anyone um, step out there, but if we have anyone who would be willing to share the person in the project that their group came up with, just quickly, just raise your hand and, or uh, and so that we will know to call on you or put put um, put put um, something in the chat box saying, yes, I'm willing to share. And if I can get Ephraim and Greg to help me monitor do we have anyone that's willing to share okay so we have i see maggie birkus amos says they can share i'm not sure what group she was in but please uh maggie you can unmute yourself thank you good thank you i am um, opted to share because i do have multiple meetings coinciding, so I might have to leave in the next 30 minutes. So yeah, as, as unexpected as it could be, I was in breakout room eight, and it was with my assistant registrar of the same center. <laughs> uh, we are from the Center for Open Distance and E-Learning, Codel, at the University of Namibia in Namibia. And we found ourselves together in breakout room number eight. And we said, <laughs> <laughs> since, since this cannot be a local person, we, we'll go for, for big shots, you know, for people that had made some impact on us somewhere in this life, mm -hmm. whether they, as you said, are still here with us or not. So we went for Steve Jobs. Oh. Um, and we were thinking that in his capacity, a project that we would like to run with him is to take us to a center of excellence in open distance and e-learning uh, beyond expectation and, and vision even for that matter. So I hope it's not too big and too far reaching, but that's what we came up with. Thank you. That is wonderful. <laughs> we've, we've got time. Would someone else like to share as well? Thank you, Maggie. Yes. I see we've got Damari uh, Sikalia. I uh, hope I pronounced it right. Uh, Damari, if you can please um, unmute yourself and go ahead. Um, thank you. We were three of us in uh, breakout room 11, uh, two of us from Kenya and uh, one from South Africa. And we settled for Mahatma Gandhi because of uh, his selflessness. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Did you have a project that you would do to celebrate Mahatma Gandhi? Were you able to... uh, yes, uh, our thinking was how to mobilize and bring people together uh, for unity and uh, just encourage people to uh, be content. Because when we are not content, that's when we try to uh have no regard for life we are not selfless and we turn to other vices thank you thank you thank you 
Thank you all for participating in this because congratulations, you just engaged in international online communication. It was supposed to be international. Zoom didn't cooperate with me. That Zoom put you randomly in. That could be the start. So if you met each other, you met someone from another country and the, this was an example of how you might start an international collaboration with a task, with a purposeful task. And we'll talk about that next. What exactly is, this is the definition of international collaboration. And of course, these same principles apply to working within your country among different universities or institutions. First of all, peer to peer. You may, you may collaborate with faculty to faculty, student to student, instructor to instructor, scientist, or you can cross those lines. But peer to peer tends to work best if you've got <clears throat> similar backgrounds. You must use some kind of technology for the international collaboration. It doesn't have to be the entire communication. I do meet with my, my collaborators. But for the most part, we meet on Zoom, we email, we use WhatsApp, um, Skype can be used, Google Docs, that's or anything that allows you to communicate. It can be real time, such as we're doing right now, or it can be asynchronous. I use a combination of both. I meet with my collaborators every week, sometimes twice a week, but we meet in Zoom every week. Facilitated means it's purposeful or structured. I gave you a task. I didn't just put you into a room and say, introduce yourselves. Because that didn't get you exchanging. That's not a purposeful enough. So it could be experiential learning. It could be writing. It could be developing ideas. But it also requires enhanced, or it leads to, I should say, enhanced cultural awareness. Because as you work together, you learn together, you share your life stories together, you begin understanding each other and realizing how your cultures have a lot in common, but there are some differences as well. So we'll talk about, about that as we, as we go along. So these are lessons learned from, as I said, I began with international collaboration, what I consider real collaboration in 2014, when I went on a trip to Russia with uh, one of our vice provost for international learning at our university. Never had thought about going to Russia. It was not on my bucket list. It was not anywhere I ever saw myself going. But I was selected as a group of faculty to travel to Novgorod State University in Veliki Novgorod. And while I was there, I happened to meet Dr. Natalia Ilshenko. So through the meetings, through the dinners, we began talking about shared interest. And from that, we started developing online courses and projects. I took two groups of students to Russia on study abroad. Um, we started developing collaborations among schools in North Carolina and schools in Russia. Some of those collaborations are still going on in which students in our North Carolina schools exchange things like musical instrument and musical videos. Um, in one collaboration, Elementary children in North Carolina taught Russian children how to do hip hop rap. And the Russian children taught the North Carolina children how to do traditional Russian dances. It can go with any age group, but this is, this is where we built our collaboration on. You must have the ability to suspend cultural judgment and bias by letting go of any stereotypes we may have developed when we first brought Russian and American college students together. 
we put them into a international course in which they had to work together to develop a project. At the end of the course, we had a session where we asked them, how have your stereotypes changed? All the Russian students, it was really funny, they said all that they had believed going in that all Americans carry guns and that we walk around shooting each other. And the American students all thought that Russians were black, nothing but black clothing, and carried big rifles and were all spies. So they all laughed about the stereotypes that they had about each other because they absolutely were not true. We had to give them a project or a purpose. Your international collaboration is about building bridges, is about building um, understandings and friendships. But you must, of course, have some sort of purpose for that collaboration. And I cannot stress this enough, there is a huge commitment that you must expend time and effort. I remember the first time that I collaborated with South Africans, the um, person I was, I was meeting with didn't really grasp time zone, which, which is understandable. So uh, the first meeting that was arranged with me from Free State was for nine o'clock a.m. Bloemfontein time. That's, that's fine. You know, that's, that's a great time to meet. Nine o'clock in the morning is a great time to meet. However, that's three o'clock in the morning, my time. So I just set my alarm for 2 a.m. and got up and we met and moved on. Because sometimes you have to have that, um, you have to have that commitment that you're gonna make the meeting work. And so now I am collaborating regularly with a colleague in Russia and a colleague in South Africa. And the three of us get together and we always put the three time zones. So it's usually 8 a.m. in the U.S., 2 p.m. in our 1400 in South Africa, and 1500 in Russia. And that's worked very well. But you have to be willing to share ideas, to develop the documents, to engage in the common work, to really set aside. And if you step on toes, you apologize and you move on. And this has happened because there are cultural faux pas that are going to occur. But you, you focus on the work and that's what's important. So examples, I, I might ask some of you that have, um, have been said in the chat or answered my question that you have worked, but what ideas, what are, what's a project that you have had that you might want to consider an international um, that you, you might. And there's some already in the chat, so I have been talking and not looking at it. But oh my goodness, look at this in the chat. I hope you all get a chance to look at what's in the chat and I'm gonna save these. But look through there and you feel free to be recognized by either Greg or Ephraim if you'd like to speak out. But what would be an idea that you would like to particularly, that you have done in the past or that you would like to do? I love the story of the Mississippi Connie. Thank you for sharing that. I worked with Mississippi schools and the children there are just absolutely adorable. And I can understand they would have that, that you, uh, my grandchildren, when I went to South Africa um, in June of last year, were afraid I was going to get eaten by lions that roam your streets. And I had to assure them that, no, there are no lions roaming the streets of Bloemfontein. Maybe the occasional giraffe up in the, in the uh, park, but that's about it. <clears throat> Very good. Any ideas? Yes. Teaching a leadership study. Yes. Oh, wouldn't Barack Obama be a marvelous leadership case study? Okay. Promote technology development. Yeah, that is an excellent one. Um, 
the, the developing a project to promote technology development for people with tech with disabilities. I hope that if you see someone who has an interesting idea that you might be able to reach out. <laughs> yes, it, the lot of excellent ideas. Excellent ideas. And as you can see, it's not all education. It's not all the social scientists. It is also the hard scientists looking at, it's going to take an international collaboration, I believe, to solve this pandemic. I don't believe any country is going to be able to do this. Okay, and Joseph, you work with grant writing, scientific, very good, very good. Wow. This is excellent. I should just turn this session over to all these excellent ideas. Grant writing, yes. I'll talk about a grant that we just uh, wrote together. Yes, teaching programs. And in fact, um, some of you, I, I would love for you to, if, you, if you'd like to reach out to me, I can maybe connect you with people at our university who have similar interest. Wow. Student partnerships. Those are excellent. That's what we're, we're doing in our international courses, which I'm going to share with you in just a minute. Okay, thank you. And I hope, please take time to, to um, read these chats because these are excellent ideas. Okay, these are some of the possible barriers and I feel like I have to mention these because if you're aware of them, sometimes you can overcome them. Of course, the first is language. Particularly, I am learning Russian a little enough to be able to now converse on a very limited basis. But language can be a barrier, particularly if you, um, sometimes you, you solve that by having an interpreter. And so I communicate sometimes with Russian colleagues and my friend Natalia is in the meeting and she interprets. Um, it's a little clunky, it's a little harder to do it that way, but you can still continue to do it and understand there, you've got many, many languages in Africa. So I know you're aware of the language difficulties. In the United States, we simply expect everyone to speak English, although we know we have a large Hispanic culture and, and Spanish has become a second language. Then there's the cultural faux pas. I would strongly recommend that you study the other culture first. There are excellent resources out there. One is Aaron Meyer, who does uh, cultural mapping. Another book is called Kiss, Bow, or Shake Hands. That is an excellent resource. And I can, I can share both of those um, with you, but there's the, the cultural faux pas that you may not, for example, in Russia, you cannot just email someone and ask them to participate with you in a, in a partnership. You must be introduced. They will ignore you. You must be formally introduced by a third party, someone they know. And so that's why it was very important that my partnership with Russia began because I was there with my vice provost and my vice provost was there to visit his colleague, his counterpart, the chancellor and the provost of that university. And because our universities brought us together. So sometimes having a, um, having a connection among your universities, for example, Appalachian State has an agreement with Free State so the University of Free State and Appalachian can engage in numerous projects together. Time zones, as I've mentioned before, time zones are, they can be a, um, a blessing or not. Um, it helps me to be able to have my international meetings like this early in the morning because my meetings generally start around nine or 10 o'clock. In fact, I'm leaving this 
to get into a nine o'clock meeting uh, next. But time zones can be tricky. And so you need to make sure you, you can understand when you can meet. Also, you have to have clarity of goals and roles. Who's going to do what? What role are you going to play? Um, who is going to take on um, this part of the project and who's not? It's if you come in with mixed expectations, as with any other project, and I love this because there's connections going on in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. That, that I, I could stop the presentation right now and just let you guys, and I, I, I will stop in a minute or two. I did want to share, these are some strategies that you might want to think about and, and some that you're probably already doing, but identify, and that's what's going on in the chat, identify the project or text to, that you want to accomplish. What can you do together? Then you choose your team members carefully based on what skills do they bring to the project. Do you have a relationship with them already? Have you worked with them in the past? Do you know, do you need someone who's very good with technology? So you want to establish areas of expertise for each team member. And I really urge you, if you're working with another culture with which you might not be familiar, please study that culture and learn about it. For example, using my Russian example again, when I visited Russia the second or third time, um, my friend Natalia told me, she said, Barbara, you cannot smile at people on the street. In, in North Carolina, in the South, we are very friendly. If anyone, it is considered rude if you pass someone on our street and you don't smile and say hello or how are you. You don't really expect to hear how they are. You just say, how, you know, hello. That's not done in Russia. You are businesslike and because they think you're suspicious if you smile at them and reach out, another faux pas. But maintaining specific times, we have set Tuesdays at eight o'clock for me, two o'clock for South Africa, three o'clock for Russia to meet every week to work on our courses. And then we also, before we leave that meeting, we have tasks that we need to do. These are some of the um, strategies that we use we, we begin with helping our students understand cultural mapping. We also create a task, a specific project. We use the technology carefully. We use it so that it doesn't intimidate them, but it's used before. And I can't stress enough, communication, communication, communication. Here are some examples of classes that we are now uh, teaching, we will be teaching in starting in January, the leading virtual teams and the international issues in sustainability. We have two teams of faculty from Novgorod State University in Russia, Free State in Bloemfontein, South Africa, and Appalachian State working on each of these classes. And we will bring students from each of our universities into these classes to have very set projects and the whole idea is to teach them first about the communication and about the culture and then for example in the cross-cultural business communication class they are being required to choose a, another country a fourth country um, this semester it's chile they may they choose chile egypt italy or japan and they must develop a business plan to approach someone from that culture who would like to, you know, who they would like to collaborate with. Um, in the international issues in technology, the teams of students are looking for technology that can address a global crisis like pandemic. In issues in sustainability, we have professors from um, Bloemfontein from Free State and the Kwakwa campus, as well as Novgorod and Appalachian State, who are looking, who will be looking at issues and actually doing a research project based on sustainability. And then the virtual teams, we will be asking them 
to organize and set up a international virtual team and lead it. These are the collaborations that we currently have going on as far as student classwork. In the patent this year, we have a grant proposal that we have submitted. We won't know, so please, I hope all of you will keep our fingers crossed. But we um, just submitted in August a grant proposal to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. And it was a team of six. There were two from Appalachian State, two from Novgorod State, and two from the University of Free State. Our team was chosen very carefully because we all brought something to the table that was needed by that grant um, proposal. That required a lot of meeting time and sharing online. As grant, as many of you that have written grants can attest, grants have very short turnaround times usually. Um, I've also engaged in professional writing. Um, my colleague from Novgorod State and I have published several articles and book chapters on our work. And then um, I'm engaging in some collaborative writing with colleagues at the University of Free State. And we have co-presented, uh, my colleague at Novgorod State has uh, co-presented with me at several international conferences. So there's a, a wide variety of activities that you can, that you can do. So let me pause here. I promise to give about 15 minutes and I love what's going on in the chats and I am going to open the floor for any one if I can ask, um, let's stop share. If I can ask Ephraim and Greg, if you would help me to recognize anyone who would like to be recognized to ask questions or help me answer questions from the chat room. I will turn over there and to ask a question, if you would like to just raise, if you go to the participant list, I don't know if you're familiar with Zoom enough or not, but raise your little blue hand and we will, we will be glad to recognize you. Or just simply yes. unmute yourself, yes. So if you want to speak, please raise up your hand and we will identify you. For any, any comments or maybe you would like to share your projects. And I love Raphael, you're interested in developing a project to ensure all teachers in Kenya can effectively use ICT to deliver their teaching online learning. That would be an excellent international project at Appalachian State. All of our universities in the system in, in North Carolina had to go to online. And, and so we, we collaborate. That's an excellent project. All right. Um, could we recognize, um, and I hope I say this correctly, Ilab Som, Dr. Som? Uh, thank you very much. I'm connecting from Nairobi, Kenya. Excellent. I'm from United States International University of Africa. Good. I have a project that has been ongoing um, with five universities uh, working together with student leaders. And the student leaders were interested in cross-cultural harmonization of um, warring, you may call them ethnic groups or tribes. And what has been lacking is the academic input into it. So I'm really looking for a collaboration with anthropologists, sociologists, community sociologists. We can work together uh, in the hot spots in Kenya and the university students are really keen in being the change agents. So coming from another background, but moving into a multidisciplinary project. I guess Africa has similar hot spots where there is warring communities. Thank you. Would, would you be willing to put your email address, Dr. Soam, in the chat box and anyone who has a colleague or would you be willing to do that and like reach out to you? In Thank unless you. have access to that. Thank you for that. This sounds like an exciting project. Any other questions or ideas about collaboration?
Oh, Dr. Uh, Kalia. Yes, you are right. <laughs> Language, I'm afraid, is not my strong suit. But go, go ahead and ask your question, please. Okay, thank you very much. Um, just I uh, was wondering when uh, we are doing a collaboration uh, with the normal face-to-face -face, uh, method, well, we know how we go about cross-border logistics and also uh, issues related to government to government and so forth. Now, when in the current scenario, when we do collaboration using technology, uh, are there requirements uh, concerning you collaborating with an institution in another, you know, country that touch on um, such a cross-border you know, regulations and all that. Yes, you do have to be very careful about that. Um, I am fortunate, the two universities that I do most of my collaboration with have already dealt with all that with their, in, they have agreements between them and their general counsels have looked into this, I'm sure. So I've not encountered that. But I, I think you would need, um, as with every project, you need to make sure that you're not violating either country's laws in transporting any kind of materials across borders, that sort of thing. So yes, you do need to be careful about that. Okay. Thank and if you. anyone wants to um, chime in if they've had that experience or can offer more guidance. Okay. Thank you for that question. I hope that was, that was Oh, thank you. All right. Anyone else? Uh, Professor Howard, as we're waiting for perhaps other people to, to ask a question or to put a comment, so I encourage you, please, if you want to ask a question or, or provide a comment, either in the chat, so just type your question or comment into the chat, um, or raise your hand if you'd like to unmute yourself and, and go ahead with your question. Um, but just a, a quick question from my side. How do you deal with situations where you want to collaborate with people where perhaps they're in situations or locations where technology is not always so uh, available or, you know, they have issues with perhaps power or connectivity um, and things don't always work out? How do you kind of manage that situation? That again is, and, and believe it or not, I have that situation a lot in, in my students in North Carolina. We have areas of North Carolina that have poor connectivity, that we don't have the infrastructure. It is a problem. It is um, not totally insurmountable. Um, you, you look for other ways, but um, in that case, it is a serious handicap if you don't have the connectivity and you don't have the infrastructure. Um, there, so there's, there is that barrier to it in having the infrastructure. And we joke because um, every once in a while, my colleague in South Africa will have the, the drainage, you know, the internet. And uh, she claims it's because the Americans are just getting up to go to work, I don't know. But at any rate, that is, that is an issue. Um, I'm not sure I have a really good answer for that, Greg. It's a, it's a good, good question. And the, there's a question from Marius about, is there a limit to the duration of a project? No, no, there is none. And if you have, you know, of course, you may want to start out with a goal and with um, that, that you've got a goal or that you want to, um, accomplish something and then you know when it's through. But for example, my colleague in Russia and I've been working on our courses for six years and uh, planned, we, we've already identified people to continue it after we retire. So not as much. Um, and then Ruth has a comment that, yeah, sometimes a challenge, is that not true in every, <laughs> Ruth, that's a great comment. The, the challenge is that you have to be, and I can't stress this enough, you have to choose carefully the people that you collaborate with because you, you want to set in advance the roles and responsibilities of each group. And 
we have had to, uh, we've had to make changes in our group. We simply, um, on my side, as well as the Russian side, we have had to thank someone for their interest and you do it very politely and you say, we understand that, that you simply may not have the time to devote for this. Thank you very much for your willingness to participate, but we will release you from your responsibilities. And that's how we've negotiated it. And they, they move on and there's no hard feelings um, because it is a lot of work. And sometimes people will get into an international collaboration and decide that oh, this, is, this is more than I wanna do then you have to have a leader in the group who's willing to say, thank you very much, but this project may not work for you. So yes, I have had that. Um, have you experienced with dominance issues? Yes, because that was another reason that you want to know the cultures and you want to avoid potential conflicts by understanding up front that yes, there are cultural differences, and yes, there are going to be times when, you know, your, your toes are going to get stepped on, but it is the project. So by keeping the project out front, that transcends or tends to transcend all those cultural issues. We have to be very careful when we are working with other cultures. And I know as an American culture, particularly, I have to be very careful that I don't dominate that I listen to other points of views. And that is simply training yourself. So, um, yes, it, it can be very discouraging. And then you look, Ruth, you look for other projects. Um, you look for other, you look for other partners in it and you look for, um, you look for, uh, those who can bring value to it. And that's another reason why you choose your partners carefully. You look for someone who's got expertise in the area, but you also want to know that that person is willing to carry their weight. So that is part of it. But that's the same to me. That's the same as if you're working with a colleague within your own university or your own institution. Other questions? These are excellent. I think I should just turn turn the presentation over to the um, participants. They have excellent questions and ideas. I hope this has been helpful. And I hope maybe I have sparked some thinking of if you're doing, um, yes, please get um, the surveys in there. Please give feedback on this. Um, I would also, I'm going to put my email address in here. So if you have any ideas or you have any um, anything that you think I should know about um, international collaboration or projects that you're doing or you would like to reach out and see if you can establish a partnership. Um, potential collaborations is just by attending conferences like this, Connie, by reaching out, look in the chat box, asking colleagues finding, uh, meeting people through professional organizations. I have collaborators now, and I mentioned this, I've got one in New Zealand that I regularly work with on uh, writing. Word of mouth is very good. Um, attending presentations of people who are doing similar projects to yours or have similar interest to you. Um, searching the web, also reaching out to people who have published in your area. Another um, excellent source is LinkedIn. I don't know if you've got LinkedIn in your country or if you've tried that, but yes, making yourself visible, um, working with your university if you've got an international department. Okay, and I believe my time is, is up. I sincerely hope that all of you will continue searching for collaborators, that you enjoy the rest of the conference. This is an excellent organization. And Ruth, I'm very um, grateful to have been asked to share this past hour with you, and I hope it was helpful. Thank you, uh, Professor Howard. Thank you so much. It's been a really an incredible session, and I think all of us have a lot that we can, we can take away from it from it. And I think what was really nice is the way that you demonstrated 
opportunities for collaboration, not just by, by telling us about it, but actually getting us and encouraging us to do it in this session. And that's really, really great. Um, from my personal side, I think uh, what one of the things I've taken away from this is that although your focus has been on international collaboration, often at, at universities and colleges, we often don't even know what some of our colleagues are doing in the departments at, round, down the road. Um, and, you know, we, we only know what's happening in our own disciplines. Um, so I think this just encourages as well to just to continue to, to, to talk to people. Uh, and I know it's difficult sometimes in the, in the remote situation where we're in, um, with many countries still in aspects of lockdown, uh, but to just to try and reach out to your colleagues in, in other institutions, but also reach out to your colleagues in your own institutions, see what, where you can collaborate, where people are doing interesting things, um, and, and they can share with us. So thank you very much, Professor Howard. We, we really valued your insights and, and, you. and your experience in sharing with us. And I hope that from this, this webinar, we will start to see some of those collaborations happening. I, I um, truly hope so. Thank you. And then just a last note from, from Nadios' side. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who participated today. We, we, we hope that you found this a valuable experience. Um, and we have, as I shared in the chat, please do give us feedback. The one aspect of feedback we're asking is this brings us to the end of the Nadiosa webinar series this year. So we will be planning a series of webinars next year. So if you have ideas uh, for what you'd like to see or topics or perhaps even presenters of, of who you'd like us to in invite or to explore or different things for us to consider particularly as we focus on issues relating to open and distance learning and, and, how, we, and how we can uh, really incorporate or, or look at issues of using technologies within our teaching and learning, please do reach out to either myself or to Ephraim or just put it into the, your feedback onto the form. Um, and we'd love to hear from you in terms of when we, when we start to plan our, our uh, Nadiosa workshops and, or webinars rather for next year that we, we get some ideas of what people would like to see. Thank you very much. That is, we are out of time. Thank you, Professor Howard. Thank you, Ephraim. And thank you to everyone. We hope that you've enjoyed today. I know I certainly have. And we wish you all the best. Please, everybody, keep safe and go well. And we will chat to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you very much. Bye-bye, everybody.